next we will look into, an, look into an example of how this uh, erroneous uh, thing can be detected, uh, errors can be detected and the recovery can take place. Suppose we have got an input string which is uh, say this uh, id plus star. So, definitely you can understand uh, the uh, what the errors that at this place we have got an error and after the star we have got an error. So, at both the places some identifier is expected and let us see how this parsing process it can detect this particular situation. So, initially the stack is containing 0 and this input is containing id plus star dollar. So, 0 and id, so 0 id says uh, shift 2. So, it will be uh, shifting id into the stack and the new state is 2. So, this state is also pushed into the stack. Now, this 2 plus, so 2 plus says reduce by rule number 3. So, it will be reducing by that uh, rule e producing id and then uh, this uh, uh, and this the new state will come. So, the, that will become this this e 1 that will be the new state and then then state 1 it is plus state 1 plus is shift 3. So, it will be shifting uh, plus into the stack and this 3. Now, 3 star. So, 3 star is e 1. So, it was expecting i d okay. and uh, so uh, that is the problem now that it has uh, it was expecting i d and got an operator. So, it will be pushing it will assume that the input that it has seen is i d only. So, if it assumes like that, so it will flash the message that i d expected and then it will push an identifier i d and uh, 2 the state 2. So, if it gets an i d then the action is uh, shift 2. So, it will push one id into the stack and the state new state 2 into the stack. Now, 2 star, so 2 star uh, is say it says that it reduced by rule number 3. So, rule number 3 will be applied and accordingly this reduction will take place and this will be the new configuration of the stack. Now, this 5 star, so 5 star is uh, shift by uh, shift 4. So, it will uh, shift star into the stack and 4 into the stack. Now, this 4 dollar, so 4 dollar the uh, this is e 1, so it is id expected. So, it will push an id into the stack and the state is, uh, the, so if it gets an id then this uh, 4 id is s 2. So, it will push it into the stack and id into the uh, id into the stack. So, that way, so the id and 2, so they are pushed into the stack. Now, this 2 dollar, so 2 dollar is uh, reduced by rule number 3. So, it will reduce by e producing i d. So, that way it will be coming to this configuration then 6 dollar. So, 6 dollar is uh, this one uh, reduced by rule number 2. So, it will do that. Then this will be the configuration then 5 dollar reduced by e producing e plus e. So, this 5 dollar is uh, reduced by rule number 1 and do that. Then it will come to this configuration 1 dollar. So, 1 dollar is accept. So, what has happened is that there were there were errors in my input stream and accordingly it could flash these messages id expected id expected like that but the parsing process could need not stop so what it did is that in the input stream it has purposefully pushed in the ids so those input symbols are ultimately going to the stack so here in the way it is shown so it has, it has not shown that it is put into the input but the input the symbols are also put into the stack so those symbols are pushed into the stack so, that way the shifting is done that way. So, uh, this uh, so this way we can rectify the, the problems and the parser can continue and uh, it can uh, take care of this uh, syntax errors and it can flash multiple errors. So, in this case it, it could flash both the errors. So, it could flash uh, multiple errors and uh, continue the parsing process and come to a decent uh, end okay, of the parsing algorithm. So, next we will be looking into an LALR parser generator tool called YAC. So, the name comes from yet another compiler compiler. So, compiler compiler means it is a compiler for compilers. So, it can like compiler it is uh, supposed to generate uh, the machine language program from the input source program. So, here as if I give the specification of the compiler and from there the output is also a compiler. So, output is so it is a compiler, but as an output it produces another compiler which uh, for the given specification. 
So, uh, this is called EAC. Yeah. So, there is uh, many other tools have been developed, but this is this was the first tool that came up with the Unix operating system and uh, later on uh, uh, many other tools have come, but uh, with the, the philosophy remains same. Okay. So, the specification style and all so that we will see slowly. Of course, uh, what I should say is uh, this tool is uh, quite powerful in the sense that it has got many interesting features which are um, uh, which are beyond the scope of uh, this uh, normal compiler theory, okay, this LALR or CLR parsing. It has got many context sensitive parts also. So, um, that way this uh, um, if you look into the complete manual of this YAC then it is much more powerful. But uh, since it is uh, part of our uh, uh, as part of our course, so we will be looking into the basic features and how it can be used for uh, developing compilers. So, it is an uh, LALR parser generator. So, it automatically generates LALR parser for a grammar from its specification. So, it, uh, so the first thing that you are that you should do like given a grammar. So, uh, you see that the most important concern after learning about this um, um, LR parsers, we see that the most important concern that we have is regarding the conflicts, whether there is any shift reduce conflict or a reduce reduce conflict or not. So, the uh, first thing that uh, of a, that is often done is that uh, given uh, when, whenever we come up with a grammar G, whenever we have got a grammar G, we pass it through this yak tool to see uh, this yak will tell us whether there is any shift in any, any conflicts or not to see whether there is any conflicts. So, if there is any conflict, so I can modify this grammar uh, and see and come up with a grammar which does not have this conflict. So, that is the first thing. So, by whatever be the technique by specifying the precedence or modifying the grammar rules or whatever we do. So, uh, most of the compiler design processes so, they go by that. So, first the bare minimum grammar is given to the uh, YAC tool and it analyzes the grammar and tells whether there is any shift reduce conflict or reduce reduce conflict in the grammar or not. And once you are uh, once you are through then we try to uh, put some extra actions into uh, corresponding to the grammar rules so that we can do our desired function. So, the desired function may be code generation desired function may be say one expression evaluation or may be generating some other output in some different formats basically a format conversion from one format to another format. So, that is the thing uh, that the compilers are doing. So, we can do like that. So, it generates LALR parser. So, that we, so we, will, we should be very happy with that because it can give us LALR parser so easily. Now, just like Lex this tool also has got the input specification file in some particular format. So, uh, we have got the three portions in it the definitions part, the rules parts and the subroutines part and they are separated by this double percentage symbols. Okay. Just like this Lex specification file we had uh, portion separated by this double percentage. So, here also we have the same thing. The definition part it will contain the token declarations C code uh, within this uh, uh, this uh, this symbols that is percentage open parenthesis uh, percentage open brace and percentage close brace. So, uh, you can have all the tokens that you have got in your language. So, you can define them in this portion in the definition section and certain part of code you may want to be copied verbatim onto the output. So, that is also uh, that that code you can put in within this symbol. So, they will be copied verbatim to the output file. Then we have got the rules. So, then in the rules, so we, have, we can write in terms of uh, terminals and non terminals. So, if you have whatever, so if you have written, if you have declared some token here and that token appears in these rules, so they will be taken as terminals and whatever is not defined as token, so they will be taken as non terminals. So, they will be taken as non terminal symbols. And then uh, the third part of this file or the specification file, so this will have the subroutines, some additional subroutines because in these rules the grammar only it is not only the grammar rules, so we will we'll have the corresponding actions also. Like you can have a rule like E producing E plus T, so E plus T then we can have the corresponding rule here and while writing this rule 
uh, corresponding action here. So, while writing this action, you may need some additional uh, C routines, and those additional C routines can be written in this subroutine section. Okay. So, these are the three parts that this uh, EAC specification file can have. Now, uh, this is a typical example uh, of a calculator to add and subtract numbers. So, we have uh, so this calculator, so you can enter some integer and through that uh, and you can have this uh, addition and subtraction operation and then you can, um, so that calculator has to be defined. So, this is the YAC specification file structure. First, we have to talk about the definition section. So, in the definition section, so we have got only one token since we are assuming that only integers can be there, our uh, calculator is very simple, it does just does integer addition and subtraction. So, we have got a token whose name is integer. So, it declares this integer to be a token. So, on this specification file, so if you write this uh, say, uh, say grammar dot y as the input specification file for the YAC and pass it through this tool yak, then it will generate two files. One file is y dot tab dot c and another file is y dot tab dot h. So, this y dot tab dot c, this actually contains the final LALR parser. So, this entire parsing program will be uh, contained in this y dot tab dot c and this y dot tab dot h, so this is basically a header file which contains this uh, token declarations and all, so that it can be attached with the lex uh, specification file, uh, lex output file and lex output file will include this y dot tab dot h. So, lex you remember that there was a uh, there was a uh, output which is lex dot y y dot c. So, this lex dot y y dot c, so this file it includes uh, this y dot tab dot h has to include y dot tab dot h. So, the idea is that in this lex specification file, you might have written like this, say that um, um, say, say for this um, numbers, integer numbers, so d followed by a digit uh, followed by digit star. So, you might have written like digit followed by digit star and then the corresponding action may be return a particular token integer. So, this token we want to return. Now, this integer declaration is available in this file y dot tab dot h. So, that way uh, I have to have this, uh, so that, that, they, that they are going to act as the interface between the lex tool and the yak tool. So, this one uh, says y dot tab dot h, so it contains many things not only this uh, token declarations, but many have uh, many other things also like it has got this. Uh, uh, so, if not defined y y s type, it will define y y s type as int. So, y y s type is the yak stack type. So, this is basically the parser stack type. So, this parser stack type. So, by default this parser stack will contain integers only because it has to contain the state number and the tokens and the tokens are has defined to be integers. So, ultimately uh, this stack contains nothing but integers. So, by default it will take uh, parser stack type as integer, but you can define your own stack type also. So, for example, if you think that my tokens are not only integers, but it has got some other attributes in it, which is very common. For example, uh, if I am uh, say having some uh, uh, integer, suppose the number value is 25. So, this 25 I want to have as an attribute of the token integer. The corresponding token return is token int is integer, but it has got an attribute whose which is the which is the value attribute and the value is equal to 25. So, that way the attribute has to be told. So, if we do that, uh, so you can define this y y s type that stack type uh, to be consisting of uh, this uh, uh, this attributes also as a part of the token or as a part of the uh, uh, non terminals. So, if it is not defined in that case it will uh, define it to be integer. 
if it is defined if the user has defined yys type then it will take that yys type then this uh, uh, has defined integer 258 so this is the token definition so in this in our particular example there is only one token so 0 to 257 so they are uh, they are uh, kept for this ascii characters and the next tokens so they are uh, defined the next values are used for defining the token. So, for 255 onwards it will start and this yyl val so this variable I have told previously basically the attribute part of the um, token. So, that is uh, that, that they are of type that is of type yys type. So, these are there in the y dot tab dot h if you file if you open so you will find at least these lines for this particular case. So, lex includes y dot tab dot h and utilizes definitions for token values that I have already said and to obtain tokens yak calls the function y y lex. So, uh, while discussing on this lex tool we have told that there is a function y y lex. So, whenever you need the next token so you can give it give, give a call to it. So, if you have got a main routine from the main routine you can give a call to y y lex. But whenever you are having this uh, um, uh, uh, parser also integrated with the lexical analyzer then from the parser it will give a call to yylex to get the next token and it is yylex return type is uh, in, uh, integer and it returns the uh, token value. So, it will be returning the value of the token and lex variable yylval returns attributes associated with the token. So, yylex will return the token value and this uh, yylval it will be simultaneously set to the attributes associated with the tokens. For example, uh, this will be uh, y y lex will return the uh, uh, token value that is 258, okay. but this, uh, the, this will be returned to this uh, uh, this will be returned by this function y y lex as the return value, but this y y l val. So, this will be having the value 25 if the lexical analysis tool has taken enough care to initialize y y l val to the corresponding value 25 for this particular case. Okay. Otherwise that will be garbage. Next uh, we will see, so, 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 so the overall lex input file for this particular application will be like this. So, uh, uh, so this part will be copied uh, verbatim, so as I said within uh, this uh, percentage uh, brace uh, start and percentage brace close. So, hash include stdio dot h, so y y error function and hash include y dot tab dot h. So, all the token declarations that you have, so they, they will come in this portion, so, although they will come as hash defines. If you open the file lex dot y y dot c after uh, compiling through the lex tool, then you will find that all the token declarations, so they have come in this part. Now, this is the, um, uh, this is the rules part for the uh, lex file. So, for 0 to 9 plus that is at least one or more occurrences of uh, the digits in the range 0 to 9. So, this y y l val, so this is set to be equal to a to y ascii to integer of y y text. So, y y text you remember that this is a variable that contains the next matched portion of the input string. So, input string may be uh, like this. So, maybe at this point the input pointer was somewhere here when this y y lex function was called and then it, it has a scanned the input and it has seen that up to this much. So, this is constituting the uh, next token. So, this y y text will be equal to this substring. Okay. So, this uh, y so this is uh, for example, if I have written like 25 plus and at the input pointer was somewhere here. So, it will take this 2 5. So, this part has the y y text. And then since this is a text value uh, or the character value, so I string value, so I want to convert it into an integer. So, I call this function a to i on this uh, string variable y y text and it returns the corresponding integer value 20. So, I uh, make this y y l value equal to that integer value so that it is uh, uh, so that it will be uh, taking it will be keeping that uh, one in the you can you can get this attribute in the uh, parser and the token returned is integer. So, it is returning the token integer, but the y y l value is set to be equal to the corresponding value. So, then the minus plus on new line, so it will return the corresponding character uh, string directly. So, star y y it will return star y y text. So, this plus minus, so we have not defined them as 
uh, separate tokens. So, you can always do that. So, you can define tokens like plus and minus, then you can say that on say getting a minus. So, you can say return minus if you have defined those tokens or plus you can say return plus. So, like so that can be done, but uh, this uh, yak tool it will allow you to write strings directly. So, if you so characters directly, so you can put it like this plus. So, we will see that. So, uh, if this yy text is written, so it will match with this plus in case of plus. So, we will not need to uh, make it separate. Then for white spaces, so it will be, uh, it will be, it will be uh, removing the white spaces. Any so then we have got a dot here. So that means for any other uh, symbol, any anything else, any other character appearing on the input stream, so it will call the function yy error. And yy error, so yy error is a standard error routine. So if you pass it one string, so it will just print that string. So it will be printing the invalid character. So, any other character that is 0 to 9 plus minus blank tab. So, apart from plus minus new line blank tab. So, apart from that if it sees any other character, so it will simply uh, uh, it, it will simply print that the invalid character. So, that is the lex specification file. Now, what is the corresponding yak specification file? So, that we will see. So, this is the yak input file. So, we have got this, uh, uh, so this is, uh, uh, so this is the yy lex function is defined, yy error function is defined. Then we are, we just, so next part is the, first part is the, uh, this part will be copied verbatim to the output as we know. Then we have got this uh, token integer, there is only one token integer that is defined. Now, program is uh, defined as program expression new line. So, you can have uh, multiple lines of expressions like, uh, so it, it is, uh, you can have uh, like 2 plus 3, 5 plus 6, 6 minus 1, etcetera, etcetera. Then uh, the, it is expected that since it is a calculator, so as you write 2 plus 3 and then place new line, so it should print the value 5. After that, if you can enter 5 plus 6 and press new line, so it will print 11 then 6 minus 1, so it will evaluate it and put the print the value 5. So, it is, so my grammar rule is program producing program expression new line. So, if I, if I write in a shorthand this program as p, so p producing p expression and the new line. So, this p can again produce uh, uh, another p expression or, or epsilon, so this is there or epsilon. So, that way I can produce this multi line uh, input sequence because this p can be replaced uh, by another p expression new line then expression new line. Okay. So, that way I can, so I can get these two lines. So, this is, um, uh, uh, so after that if this p is replaced by epsilon, so it turns out to be expression new line expression new line so that way i can have two expressions so in, uh, uh, as the number as i have got multiple number of expressions so uh, in each line there there can be one expression so i can do that now when this new line is seen so what we do we print the uh, value dollar 2 so Whenever you are trying to refer to this uh, uh, grammar symbols in your action part, so this part, this left hand side will be referred to as dollar dollar, then this will be referred to as dollar one, dollar two, dollar three. So when I say dollar two, actually it will be referring to this, and it has got uh, some attribute associated with it that is in yyl val, so uh, so that the, so that that stack type. So, that will have this uh, value the dollar 2. So, we will see how are we going to assign this. So, it will print that value of dollar 2. And so, this is one rule for that we have got this action or so nothing is written here means this is basically that epsilon. So, epsilon need, need not write explicitly. So, if there is a blank that means that is epsilon and then this uh, semicolon that is the end of this rule. So, this particular uh, uh, particular grammar it has got only one production rule expression uh, program producing program expression new line and after that for
for the expression we can have some rule like say expression it may be an integer. So, in that case dollar dollar is made equal to dollar 1. So, because dollar 1 the in that y y l val the lex uh, lexical analysis tool the lex it has given me the value. So, that uh, value will be assigned to dollar dollar. So, that is this expression will get the value there. Similarly, if it is expression plus expression then it will be doing uh, the, the, the value of this expression will be made equal to value of dollar 1 plus value of dollar 3. So, dollar 1 plus dollar 3. Similarly, if it is expression minus expression, so it in that case it will do dollar dollar equal to dollar 1 minus dollar 3. This uh, so the main routine, so this will give a call to y y parse and y y parse routine it will parse the entire string uh, entire input file and it will produce uh, all the outputs like this. And uh, if there is some error, so it will call this yy error function. So, it will print this, um, uh, it can print some messages and it can do that. So, this yak can determine shift reduce and reduce reduce conflict. So, this is one problem, one thing. Then this uh, shift reduce conflict is resolved in favor of shift and reduce reduce conflicts are resolved in favor of the first rule. So, that I have already said, but this may not be acceptable. So, in that case, you need to modify the grammar. Uh, you can you need to tell the precedence and all so that this uh, parser will be generated properly. So, this is a very simple example. So, there are many many other interesting features. So, I would uh, suggest that you look into uh, the manual for this uh, Lex and Yak to get a good hold of how to use these tools for writing good compilers. So, next, uh, so we have seen these tools. So, next we will be looking into something called syntax directed translation. So, at the end of the parsing process we know if a program is grammatically correct or not and many other things can also be done towards the code generation by defining a set of semantic actions for various grammar rules. So, this is called syntax directed translation. So, while doing the uh, uh, translation, so it is guided by the syntax of the language. We can have some set of attributes like this uh, uh, grammar symbols that we have taken. So, we can have some attributes associated with the grammar symbols and we can write actions in terms of those attributes. So, we, so this parse tree with this attributes uh, set, so that is known as annotated parse tree. So, how are you going to use this is uh, say uh, this one. Suppose we have got a grammar like this. So, E producing E plus T or E minus T or T and T producing all these digits 0, 1, 9, 9. So, we have got attribute val for E and T that will hold the string corresponding to the postfix expression. Okay. Now, so we want to convert the a string to a postfix expression. So, postfix means the operator comes after the operands. So, for example, if I have got an expression like say 5 plus 6 into 7, then in the postfix expression, so this will be 5, uh, sorry, this will be 5, 6, 7 star plus. So, while doing the evaluation, so once you see the a, 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 an operator, so you take out the previous two operands, do the operation and then uh, replace this part by the result that is 42. And then again you see an operator, so you take the last two operands and do the operation and make the value 47. The advantage of this postfix expression is you do not need to have parenthesis. Okay. But uh, there, are may, there are many uh, uh, applications where this postfix expression is used, but how to convert uh, this uh, um, an expression infix expression to postfix, so this is a grammar based solution for that. So, let us see how are you writing these rules. For example, let us look into this rule E producing E plus T. So, for the sake of understanding we are writing this second E as E 1. So, E, e dot val is basically E 1 dot val. So, E 1 has got the corresponding value. This operator is called the concatenation string concatenation operation. So, with this val, so this T dot val will be concatenated and this plus will be concatenated. Similarly, it is e1 minus t, so with that e dot val, e1 dot val, t dot val and minus will be concatenated. So, that way it will work and this t producing 0 to 9, so the, for them the t dot val will be equal to the number. So, for example, if this is the string, so now uh, this is the parse tree produced, 
Now when this reduction is made, the value is made equal to 3. Similarly, when this reduction is made by E producing T, then this you look into this rule, it says E dot val is T dot val. So, this is E dot val is made equal to 3. Similarly, here, so E producing E plus T, say this rule. So, this is equal to E1 dot val that is 3, then concatenated with E2 dot val, T dot val that is 2 and concatenated with plus. So, I get this string. And similarly, when I have got, when I do this particular reduction, so this 3 star, 3, 2 plus, then 4 and minus. So, they are concatenated. So, I get the whole postfix expression. So, this way I can have this syntax directed translation schemes for uh, uh, doing many activities. So, to conclude, we have seen various types of parsers uh, for syntax analysis. We have seen error detection recovery uh, integrated into the parsers. Parse tree can be produced uh, implicitly or explicitly by the parsers and parse tree can be used for the code generation process as we have seen in the, uh, uh, in the syntax directed translation scheme. So, this uh, par the code generation is actually done uh, by the syntax directed translation policies and while going to the intermediate code generation phase, so we will be looking them in detail. Thank you for this part of the lecture.